Welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and today we're starting a new project. And this is going to be this is pretty much a, a fun project, but it is a paying job. I'm teamed up with David down at McDermott Studios. Uh, it, he's he's a glass blower and glass. He works well, not just blowing glass, but he he does glass work, all all different phases of uh, uh, anything that could be built out of glass. He's uh, he's pretty well. Uh, been doing it. He has a project of making a chandelier for one of the hotels here in uh, in Cape Cod, and uh, he brought the idea uh, to me, and uh, and I said, okay, what are you looking from me, and and I need to build him. He wants me to build him a uh, a metal cage structure in a certain shape, so that he can create his glass work, attach it to the frame, and then suspend it from the ceiling with lights inside and become a glass chandelier. And uh, it's it's got a marine theme uh, behind it, so that's hence my video title. Uh, Dave started by talking about it with me, and then uh, I says, let me, can you put something down on paper? So he, he did, he, he drew me a sketch. <clears throat> and then I mold that over for a couple days and uh, then he made a visit down here and we kind of talked about uh, some different things. Um, some uh, uh, tie wire and uh, fabrications of building the cage and stuff like that. Then I took a trip down and, and visited his shop and uh, got to see some of the items that are going to be hanging off of this and them being made. All right, Dave's uh, reaching in with the gathering rod and he's got a wad of glass on there. And he's over here and he's cooling the handle so he's able to work it barehanded. And this is a forming cup. I don't know exactly the name for it uh, because I I have a like a sieve sometimes and he'll tell me what it is but basically he was just showing you that if he stops rolling it it will take a set all right he's gonna put a puff of air he just blows it in there real quick and he holds it with his thumb and then he actually holds it up and, and he can watch the uh, pressure build and swell the glass to a certain point um, he, he does work real fast and it takes I've seen this like three four times and and uh, you can look in the center and you can barely see the hollow in there. And he keeps it moving so it doesn't take a sag. Now it's cooled down enough so it's not enough glass to make what he wants to so he's actually grabbing another layer of glass over the top of this real quick and he's going to do another cool down. Now he's got a larger cup now that he's he's bringing it down to temperature even more so now. That's what he was just telling me that he's cooling the glass down now. He's going to blow in some more air. You see, it, you saw the air go right, rushing right up in there. So it's got. Now, right here, he's shaping it out to start the shape for the mold. And then he goes back into this furnace to heat it. And then walks over and he stands on a podium type of thing, holds it down into the mold, and gives it a quick blow of air. And now it's got a spiral or shape that he wants to put in the glass itself. Now the two paddles come in by a co-worker to hold the heat away from his hands while he works on there. And now they're going to be cutting in two diameters there. One diameter is going to be where the wire or holding is going to be wrapped around the glass at the end and the other is going to be a break off point where this will actually get removed from the rod. Another puff of air. See how it really brought it out round. A 
little cooling now in a couple spots. It's amazing that, you know, he's just, he, he's wanting to keep it hot in certain areas and cool in other areas. And, and that's what this is all about. If you see the little subtleties of that little tiny bit of air and stuff makes a big difference. Now he's heating it in a certain spot and the, uh, they call this the glory hole. Now he's pulling it out of there. Now he's going to create a longer shape in it. And he's cooling the two ends again because he really wants that center to do the motion or the stretching as he pulls this tear shape out. A little puff of air. You notice he's not holding it all the way in. He's gonna. He just wants to grab some more heat off of the very end of it. And you watch everybody in in this place. His two coworkers are really paying attention to what he's doing and timing their little bit of action. Isabel is gonna put a little tiny puff of air in the same time he does that little twist right there. That's all. So she was there just holding and waiting for that perfect time to give him that little bit of air pressure he's going to need in there to do that. Now he trimmed off the end and now he's going to go in and he's just glazing the end of it. So it's not so sharp. And now he's taking a diamond file and he's etching around the diameter. Now he's carrying it on over and he's going to drop it right on the table. Now the heat is just a little bit of smoothing out that rough edge there where he's cut it and um, it, it was rough. Now it's going into an oven and it's going to normalize or cool down real slow so that the thick portions of the glass and the thin portion of the glass cool down at the same time. And there he is. There's a pile of them that he's working on. So we, we've really got each other kind of clued in on what the whole project is, even though we're, we're building and designing this project as, as it comes about. Anyway, I've been waiting for some material to come in, and I got the material in. I've been doing some drawing uh, of my own in on the plasma cam and created uh, parts to be cut out. Uh, let me get set up here. We got a camera that's going to be right on the torch uh, because I got some uh, some intricate cutting on these parts, and I'm going to be going for the ultimate sharpness and locating. This part is not only locating it, it, itself in relationship to the whole thing; it's going to be re, uh, locating uh, 14 rings that'll be rolled and supported on this piece here. So let's get to it.
Okay, now that we've made our main supports for the rings that will get mounted for this framework for the chandelier, we need to make a jig to hold these in place. So we're going to make three rings, and one will go around the, the broad or the middle section here, and two will go at each end holding the openings to the right diameter. All right. And yes, all of these are exactly the same. And we're going to mount these in, and then we're going to have one that spaces in between all of these. But we need to create the jig and hold these in place. And then we're going to decide how long we want to make them because they're not going to be the same length. Because as we get to the narrowness of the top and bottom, the, the width between them, we want to keep that open gap for light to show through. And uh, that's kind of our plan. And you can see that by cutting them out the way we did we are very happy with actually how close 
if I had a straight, <laughs> if I had a parallel grip. <laughs> All right, so it's pretty, uh, pretty uniform. All right, let's get to, um, let's get to cutting these uh, rings out because I'm anxious to see this thing sitting together. And I think while it's probably cutting out, we're going to be doing some dressing and we're going to get this plate off of here and stuff like that. Here we go. Looks nice and true. We're gonna try it with a piece of uh, try a piece of 316s down in between there, and, and we'll see how it does. Let me get my cameras going here. This is gonna be the second ring. This one here is the medium sized one. The small one we just did uh, was for the six inch opening at the bottom, and this one here is gonna be the 10 inch opening at the top. All right, let me get uh, some air going here. and get this some um, dark and uh, we're going to start getting the show going here. Looks pretty good. Looks like the same as the uh, first one there. The quality. And she's 
everything's all loose. I'll pop it out of there when uh, we get done doing the big one there.
the biggest ring I've ever cut out. Okay, a little disc shape and whatever. We're gonna we'll be playing with that, whether it's actually important or not. We're basically using it to separate our individual pieces here and hold them but uh we you know we always let things cool down so that we can see what they are but we might be able to flip that in we want to make sure that it kind of stays somewhat flat and um this is going to go ahead and and locate each one of our rings we uh we cut 24 in here uh in this one here well we cut 24 in each one of them but we're going to be using all 24 here these are basically for indexing but only 12 of those are going to get used 12 of those are going to get used we're getting ready to cut out a straight strip right here, just like the two strips that we cut out in our trial and error here. Um, at first I, I thought maybe what we'd have all 24 increments all the way around here to have the lower section of those stays or struts curving around to locate. This ring is going to go down and those are going to get welded in place so that it has the opening, the 10 inch opening on the bottom, you know, that's actually the top down there and that's the bottom up there. And um, so, but basically I, after assembling this last night, I'm, uh, I'm convinced I just want 12. And then we're going to do another, we're going to do another little section in there, but it's going to be free floating onto the quarter inch rounds that are there. Um, so I cut one out and um, I found something that will help me hold it in position and do the welding and everything and it's just a, a, a scotch on the, on the larger side. So I went ahead and I lengthened it a little bit here so that my band would come out 100% true and round and be able to weld it around that flange right there. And we're getting ready to go ahead and cut this out and then I'm going to show you how we're going to go ahead and, and cut and roll uh, the ring. And these segments were all, all created by um, the programming in the, in the plasma camp should be and we were able to take a couple of their shortcuts and incorporate it into just a little common sense measuring and boom we were able to take and put the array of the slots out in a row and that was all pre-calculated off of the um, pi you know the, the length or circumference uh, by figuring out the diameter and then of course we linked it a little bit because by the time we got this wrapped around there we were uh, we were about the, the shortness of the thickness of the material here um, so we decided to go ahead and cut another one this is another reason why you always want to have extra material and it always seems like you're not the expert until the very last or the, the end of the project then you're pretty well uh, comfortable and uh, pretty well know what's going on Sometimes you get lucky, you get you get to hit it right on the, on the money the first time, but sometimes it's like this. All right, here we go. Let's get some air here. All right. Even though this is a real short cut here, I wanted to emphasize the importance of when you're laying out a part and you have pretty much a straight line on the part and then you have a lot of action or a lot of cutout or shape difference on one edge of it you want to go ahead and have that one edge that has all the intricate cutting or the extra motions in it all on the leading edge or the side cut first and next to the edge of the part and then when you have that straight line you have that cut being done off of the like it's the drop off of the main body of material that way it will hold the uniformity and keep the part from warping and curling in excess and you'll have a nice finished part at the end Here. I hear pop and loose already. Alright, let it cool down, we'll chip that out and we're gonna we're gonna take it on over to the roller and put it through the rollers and create our ring that should fit perfect.
Kind of always go through backwards also. Now with these notches in here, it kind of gives it a little crinkle bends, but when I hammer it around the outside of my ring there, I'm able to bring it in, bring it round and true. All right, we're gonna do a little hammering, and then we'll get over there where we're gonna clamp it. I actually have two diameters. Uh, the one ring that is on my hydraulic press, I put that in there and then I can hammer each one of these with the rawhide and I kind of give it nice and smooth. It opens it up a little bit, but I'm going to clamp and hold this right in place. Use the table and then I'm going to use the actual bowl holes here to hold this uh, flange in parallel and smooth and I can just lock down each one of my uh, clamps in a horizontal and I can just slide it right around. and. I go ahead and I squeeze those. It's one thing nice about these Bessie's clamps is you can give it a little bit of a squeeze and it kind of tensions it. Alright. A little hammer in there. Alright. We'll come around here. I don't think we need to go to every bolt hole, but. right in and look at that huh that's gonna be that's gonna be slick all right we are gonna have to get this down a little bit and then oh I know what we're doing <laughs> we're lifting it because the inside here is there we go all right We'll be able to weld that right there with the wire feeder and then we're going to have our ring that we'll be able to set down inside the center there and then tack each one of those at that end there. We're going to make something for the other end as well and then we got to get the thing plumb in line as we're tacking this thing so that it doesn't look like it's like this off to the side. It's a nice day. I got the doors open and if I have this uh, uh, camera out here, it's uh, the back uh, light in here is not good. Over here is too close. Over there, you look in and you got the bright light. So this is a little bit far for you. And I mean, you're looking through this opening here, but you can see that I've got a twist tie wire here. We're holding the uh, separator plate up here. We're not going to worry about the big ring yet until we get ready to uh, space out the wiring and and the fan. Then we'll go ahead and we'll take the big ring and that'll come into play. But for right now, I've taken a small ring. We've tacked it to the table. We've got our roll ring and two uh, parallels here, or two nice big squares. Measure from here to the center. We get the arc out here, equal both sides. And now we can go ahead, I think, and we can break this loose and, uh, and spin it 90 degrees. And then we're going to go for our next two, and we're going to do the same thing. We'll just crisscross them. And what we're going to end up having is a tack wall all the way around on here so we can still fluctuate the thing around because we got this ring and the ring is going to set and tack right to all the, the upper points up here. And then this plate will be able to knock straight down and then we'll have this ring and this ring right here holding the entire package deal. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and start rolling our rings. We're going to start out with the biggest one. And then as we're tightening our rollers over there, we'll be making each one that will be uh, uh, coming in from that direct diameter there until we come all the way around. Okay, now I'm going to easily pick this up, hopefully. And I'm going to set it down right there. So actually, the, the little ends with that round wire will set, it actually protrudes out and locks right into there. All right, now we can set up our next two. 
and they're going to fit in here like that and come into there and we put a clamp and then we'll tack wall it do the same thing we'll twist tie these in here tack it down here and then go around to the next one I uh, thought about how to do this and I tried a couple different things here and it seems to be the only thing that actually kind of makes sense but we had to actually tack this plate right down on the table so it wouldn't move and we can lay out on our table and the first thing was getting equal from our our ring right here so that the outside of the belly of this was out and then that would that would tell us whether we're we're leaning that way or that way just in time go in to have some dinner and but I did want to see this thing lifted loose from the the jig and the jig on the table I can still locate it there if I want to and and let's turn it up right side up here okay awesome gives you a little better perspective of how it's actually going to be hanging and this is sticking up just right to have my last ring here each one of these grooves here is for a quarter inch round to go around in between here will be a short section that will support so that four inches the narrow or the widest gap i want to have in here so that it gives them options for tying off the other scallops on this inside are for areas if he wants to he can come in and tie between the runs so it's an option thing so I, it's just as easy to put them in there as it is to let it go and um, and then uh, we're gonna we're trying to get it over to him so he can start tying some of his glass on here and get the feel of how it's going to be hanging and, uh, and we'll kind of play around with uh, we're going to be you know building it this way lets me have it completely open and we can play around with what kind of lighting we're going to be putting in here or he's going to be putting in here and I will build, build it to suit what he, he uh, wants. Alright, I think that's my second dinner call. Alright, go get some chow guys. <laughs>